So just for a change, we're going to do another mod dismantle. Yay! Uh, this time the Geek Vape Aegis, well I think they're just calling it an S100. It's basically the successor to the Aegis uh, Solo. So little single battery guy, the same sort of deal, waterproof, shockproof, what it was supposed to be, all that sort of stuff. I've just got it next to the L200, just because, I mean, they're so similar. So obviously they've done a redesign and just made one, one off the other. Now, there's been some issues already with this guy like what we kind of thought on the on the video on the L200 little bit sketchy on the top the ceiling on the top plate I have seen some videos showing people doing tests on these for the waterproof waterproofing and uh, basically putting them underwater for a certain amount of time something like 30 minutes and uh, yeah the whole battery compartment just water pouring out the bottom so the seal not holding and the other problem I've seen is the top plate breaking loose from the mod. Now I thought this might be an issue when I saw that the screws on the top plate here actually go into plastic. So that it's kind of like a two-piece um, plate design here where you've got a, a metal plate of the 510, then a plastic plate underneath it screws into, then that screws into the plastic body of the mod or the plastic inner frame. The problem is, you know, you're screwing into plastic with pretty small screws. You can imagine if you drop it on the tank and it hits tank first, there's a fair bit of leverage there and it just pulls those screws out of the plastic body. And that's obviously no good, that's a problem. I think the video I saw, the guy had dropped it like the first day he had it and just ripped the whole top plate out of it. Now, I mean, that is kind of abuse, I guess you'd call it when you drop a mod pretty hard, but that's what they're for. It's it's um, tough mod, you know, shockproof and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so, mm, so I'm not too sure about the design they've gone with with this new generation of Aegis mods. So in packaging, they call this the S100, but even in Geek, Geek Vape's email to me, they called it the Solo 2. So obviously it's meant to be a Solo replacement, but they kind of like couldn't figure out what to call it. S100. Now, straight off the bat, I'm a bit concerned about the 100 watt rating of this device. Uh, 100 watts on a single 18650, that's a lot of power. I calculated that if uh, the mod lets the battery sag down at 2.8 volts under load and you've got it at the full 100 watt output, it's going to be drawing something like 35 amps. Now, there isn't a single 18650 that can handle a continuous 35 amp discharge. They just don't exist. 30 amp is where they top out at. So already we can see that it's... I'm not sure if you'd call it irresponsible design, but so you've got the capability with this mod of really putting a lot of stress on, on the cells that you're using. And um, yeah, I think 100 watts too much, straight up. It's just too much. I think it should be limited to something like 80 watts. Now you could make the argument that with this guy, it's a 200 watt mod as well. And you're in the same sort of boat there where you're, you're potentially drawing up to 100 watts per cell. Difference being though that there's very, very few people that ever take these up to 200 watts. Like, who vapes at 200 watts? That's very, very few people actually do that. And if they're doing that, they're used to using 30 amp batteries and kind of dealing with the risks they're taking by doing so, I guess. Well, I feel like it's much more likely, much more possible that someone is going to put this up to 100 watts and vape it as a daily thing. Now, aside from the fact that you're really pushing your batteries too hard, if you're trying to run this at 100 watts, it's not going to last. It's just not going to last at all. You know, try running a poor little single 18650 at full, you know, 30 to 35 amps. You're just going to get like no vaping time out of it. It seems completely pointless, I think. So, yes, it might do it. Do you want to do it? Is it a good idea? No, definitely not. Just don't get this with the idea that you're going to run it at 100 watts all the time. Like, don't think, oh, this is great. It's a tiny little mod and I can get this huge amount of power run this daily thing just i wouldn't recommend it i think it's a stupid idea personally and i don't think it should be able to do that personally so that's that's what i feel about that now i want to see if the inner uh, frame of this device is the same as the l200 where it's plastic and also this top plate construction and whether it's got the same sort of ceiling i imagine it's going to have the same reliance on this top rubber piece silicon piece to provide all the ceiling for the device. So anyway, we're going to take it apart and uh, see what's inside. So just the same with the L200, all these outer screws are T5. We've got the same deal as the L200 here with the charging port. 
So you've got this uh, silicon flap, which is part of the top piece uh, that covers up the port. You just have to make sure that if you're taking this anywhere, you know, where it is going to get wet, that's got to be down plugged in properly. And if this starts to wear or lift up over time, be aware that that will definitely impact the liquid resistance of this device. And there's the top plate off, silicon piece off, and yeah, it looks like it's the same deal as the L200, no liquid sealants or anything else holding that, it's literally just that. So it's a little bit different to the L200, but essentially the same. There's no secondary screws in this top piece that holds the 510, it's just um, floating and held in by the top plate. So let's get the outer casing off. So yeah, that does mean actually, while I'm here, that if you do drop this onto a hard surface, tank side down, pretty good chance you're going to break these plastic pieces. You're going to break the screws out of the plastic pieces. Uh, so I definitely see that being a weak point with this mod as well. It does have the same disable switch on the side as the L200. And I did mention in the last video on the L200 that um, it's not a physical interrupt of the circuit. It's just a little magnet on the back side of this switch that corresponds to a sensor on the board. Uh, I should elaborate a little bit more on why that does actually make a difference. You're not physically cutting off any current. So having that switch in the lock position won't prevent any auto firing or anything that's faulty or wrong with the board. So if you've got a board that's playing up and, and you know sometimes boards auto fire, this won't prevent that happening, will not, because it doesn't interrupt the current. If the board is, if something in the voltage converter is uh, triggering wrongly and putting power out to the coil, that won't prevent it. So basically what I'm saying is don't think that this is a, a safety sort of thing in the event you've got a kind of partially faulty mod. You shouldn't be using a partially faulty mod, obviously, if it starts auto firing or doing anything weird, stop using it. Oi. Okay, so same deal as the L200. We have a plastic inner, plastic inner frame, inner shell, whatever you want to call it. So we're back on the Phillips head to remove the outer frame. And that comes off pretty easily. So let's check to see if that's actually metal. I think it is. It's so light though. Even that's got some more weight to it. Pretty sure. Okay, let's give these a scratch up. Yeah, so both these pieces are actually metal. I would say powder coating. It's a little bit hard to tell. Yeah, it looks like it, I've already got a bit of a chip on the bottom piece there. But yeah, definitely metal. I just scratch it down to metal there. Um, if you can see there, yeah. Definitely metal underneath, just feels very, very light. Probably some sort of zinc alloy as normal. And this guy appears to be plated, but yeah, it's metal underneath as well. And that feels more like metal, that's that's a fair bit heavier. But yeah, inner frame, all plastic, and that weighs just almost nothing. So back to the Torx. Smaller Torx, not that one. And there's two small Torx screws holding the top of the frame cover on. And they are a bit smaller, a T4 instead of the T5. Just noticing some tabs alongside of the uh, screen cover here. And I would say it's kind of glued in as well. And there's the screen cover lifting away from the case. Still feels like it's attached down the bottom somehow. It appears as though this bottom silicon piece is actually bonded to the plastic body like it's molded directly onto it. That's a bit interesting. Yeah, this is a little bit different to the L200 I think. It's actually got a glued on kind of outer screen. Oh, look at this. So the outer plate is 
it's just got adhesive holding it onto the whole plastic cover and two more torque screws hiding in there just to trick us yeah so you do actually have to be pretty nasty to get inside this mod okay keep in mind that if this plate is not sealing to this outer plastic if you get liquid in between them that shouldn't compromise the seal in this case just like the original legend where you could get liquid under the outer cover but it wasn't actually going into the device it wasn't through the main seal to the board it looks like the same thing in this in this mod where um you could get moisture and liquid sort of get through that adhesive foam and then find its way in between this screen it's hard to describe these things what would you call that outer plate that's the outer plate <laughs> but it shouldn't affect the ceiling because the buttons are actually on a molded in membrane on this plate. So yeah, if you notice condensation or moisture, probably not a big deal actually, just apart from being annoying. Okay, and there's the screen cover off properly. And you can clearly see, so that's solid there, solid layer there. So you've got one main plate, I guess you'd call it. And then the screen cover, another cover over the top of that. Seems a bit redundant. I don't know if they did actually do that on the legend. Maybe they did. I just didn't get that far, maybe. Now we're into the board. And typical geek vape, no conformal coating on the board. It's like they're allergic to coating their boards, which is definitely unfortunate because it's always better to have another layer of protection there in case a bit of liquid does go through this top plate or you know you leave the flap open the flaps popped open and then you've had it somewhere wet and you get a bit of moisture always better to see a conformal coating and the board looks completely dry so we're just going to lift up this screen and have a look at the microcontroller careful careful okay there we go same sort of deal we've got a ribbon cable that's directly soldered to the board so if your screen goes out you're pretty well stuffed impossible or very very difficult to replace and i'm not sure what kind of microcontroller that is i don't recognize i don't recognize that logo it could be an st yeah i think that is actually an st microcontroller so it seems like for this generation of um ages they've gone with a different board manufacturer to the original uh yeah the board just looks quite different and it's and they're using different microcontrollers there is some interesting stuff going on here i'm just noticing they've built up a whole lot of solder on the board big lumps gobs of solder and i would say yeah okay so that's the negative so the connection from the battery threads which are electrically connected to the battery cap come up in a little tab and then the tab is screwed onto i guess another tab that's soldered into the board we'll get a closer look at that in a second we'll just get the board out they have used a heavier duty fire switch and i'm pretty sure it was the obelisk that i was kind of complaining that they've used the same smaller button for the fire button and um then weirdly they've gone and used a yeah a fair bit bigger button and these type are fairly resistant to ingress because it's it's actually a rubber silicony rubber you know that sort of compound membrane that sits on top of the switch does seem to protect itself a bit better from ingress not that it necessarily should matter again because this is a sealed device and t5 again for <laughs> the screw that goes onto the battery tab and we should be able to lift the board out yep there we go okay so what you've got going on here is a tag that's soldered to the board gold plated tag this guy just fits down into this hole here and you can see the metal of the negative battery threads this would be one piece electrically connected to the negative of the cell and extends down into the plastic then that tag just fits into the gap and um and just touches either side so it's actually not physically screwed onto that metal piece 
it's just screwed into the plastic and then these little wings here fit down into the into the gap and and just press on that on that metal piece there so that's probably one of the weirder ground connections i've seen and we seem to have a whole lot of white sealant silicony stuff over the board here for what purpose i don't know because there's nothing to short out on there it's just plastic i actually wonder th this would be over the mosfets i'm wondering if this is some kind of um heat dissipation like this is quite thermally conductive i'm not sure about that but i think that's the only real reason you'd need to whack a whole lot of this stuff on it i mean hopefully it's not insulating the um, mosfets because you've got mosfets under here and they they're generating heat especially if you're running a thing at 100 watts they're going to heat up pretty quick and we're seeing all the normal stuff really no surprises for the board itself microcontrol there um power section big inductor which looks about right for 100 watt board then mosfets for the switching for the voltage conversion so it's your power output section and then you'll have some other ancillary stuff like charge circuit probably that guy um inductor for the charge circuit probably another switch mode supply for the screen and microcontroller voltage and you know just pretty standard standard stuff there nothing too tricky the wire connections look decent decently soldered they're um they're normally pretty good the hand soldering connections you know they got to do them so fast at the factory but they they rarely get these wrong they're normally pretty decent 1.4 a i wonder if that is some sort of revision of the board it's just a little bit weird we've got a mosfet here that isn't square and deliberately so it's actually placed on the board at about a i don't know about a 30 degree angle that's um really weird you almost never see that and i don't know why uh probably because they oh, it's weird maybe just ran out of space where they wanted to put that tag uh and the inductor and yeah that's a little bit strange there's a closer look at the 510 assembly and it's integrated with a cell contact into one unit so we might just see if we can get that a little bit further apart see if there's any weirdness going on in there okay and they just keep mixing and matching phillips and torque screws just pick one <laughs> make me have to change a bit a thousand times And there's inside that assembly. Little retainer plate, the positive contact for the cell, and a spring. Yeah, so just two different things integrated into the same component, really. We've got the cell contact on one side, 510 on the other. That's with all the frame removed. Spring for the 510 positive and we have got a single o-ring seal on the 510 pin insulator should all just actually come apart uh, so the insulator itself has a small teeny tiny little o-ring that fits into the the metal body of the 510 and then the positive fits into the insulator. Yeah, the way screwdriver. So that's not particularly comprehensive either. If you do have liquid pooling up in the 510, which, you know, it does happen. There's only really one O-ring at any given point stopping liquid getting down through this pin and into the mod which of course the pin is moving every time you take a tank on and off um so i wouldn't be a hundred percent confident that a single o-ring will stop that it does seem to fit fairly well decent fit it's not super loose or anything you know but just a really basic clear silicon o-ring i remember the aegis mini was a tank of a mod like it was really solid it had a um a large stainless steel 510 um like a big slug of a thing that fit into the mod 
uh, which was completely sealed, had two O-rings on it, and seemed a lot more durable, and I'm pretty sure it was a metal frame. So you had big sturdy screws holding that 510 assembly in. I don't know why I felt the need to do that, but there's the whole board removed from the shell. Wire connections, positive cell contact, positive 510, negative 510. And yeah, as we talked about the negative. So overall, it's a very similar design to the L200, basically just a single cell version of it. And uh, in my opinion, I think it's gonna suffer from the same kind of problems, which mainly is the liquid sealing on the top, I think is not the best. It's relying completely on this silicon uh, piece to seal it up. No liquid sealants or anything. And the other problem is these screws potentially pulling out, well, I reckon probably likely to pull out if you drop this mod onto the tank, has a decent hit onto the tank. Uh, I would not be surprised at all if these screws, three screws, start to pull out or even crack that plastic. And um, yeah, once that happens, the old top plate's gonna basically fall off or your tank's gonna get wobbly. And um, then it definitely won't be sealed if that lifts up. And uh, yeah, it may not even be usable if the tank's, you know, wobbling and half falling off. So yeah, I don't know. Um, well, tell me what you guys think. Do you think this is a step back? I reckon it probably is. I think it's a step back from the Aegis Mini as well. Now we have got the Aegis um, Mini 2, or what are they calling it? M M100. So next video we're going to have a look at that. It hasn't arrived yet, but I am keen to see it. And uh, I've got some things I want to give geek vape crap about in regards to the original Mini. Okay, that'll just about do it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Cheers. You can just play some elevator music while I put this thing back together. Uh, what have I done? I really should do this while I remember what goes where. janky this top assembly just sort of it was very hard to get all that clipped together mm, not sure about that yeah little snap together plastic pieces multi-layered plastic pieces clipping together I think we're definitely on a lower rung for um, reliability here than um, they're the legends or Aegis's Agi. Just barely hanging on by a thread or two. Well, I've only got a few threads on them, I guess, these screws, but 
wasn't a whole lot of engagement there. Put the threads into the hole. Actually, the other thing to note here is that the cell is pushing up against this plate all the time. So it's kind of sprung on this um, on this plate and these three screws just constantly pushing up. So uh, even if you have it dropped that way and the cell kind of hammers that contact, it's going to try and push this plate out. Yeah gets worse and worse. button just clips in. Oh man, that's not going to stay in. Okay, yeah, if your button's popped out, just let me know, because <laughs> I reckon, <laughs> look how easy it is for that to pop out, unless I put that back in wrong, but um, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Oh, I've lost it. What have I done? Damn it, I found a little magnet. Isn't that the cutest little magnet you've ever seen? Oh. Tiniest little Neo Rare Earth magnet there. I'd say that guy has dropped out of this plastic piece inside.
I've got the sticker. Oh well. see very dim screen yep we're good Woo. just been using this um, geek vape Z Z tank whatever you want to call it we'd, we'd say Z here in Australia I think you guys say Z don't you in US I don't know um, not a bad little tank quite a nice little mouth along and um, yeah, I like the drip tip, I like the airflow, can close it off. It's The airflow is nice and firm, so you're not going to accidentally bump it. Stupid thing though is that that Z on the tank, you can't see your liquid level. Like, if you're looking into the tank, I mean you guys can see it from there. I mean you can't see anything, but that's the point. That's literally, I can't see that any better than what you can see it on camera, which is basically not at all. Um, so it's about two-thirds full can't see it uh, yeah definitely <laughs> style over function yep um, apart from that though no good coils good coils been fine two mils a little bit small don't know about the top airflow don't generally care it just takes up extra space in the tank where you've got to have the, the air go down in between the coil and the liquid and Apart from that though, yeah, quite liked it. Yeah, good little tank. 